Okay, let me move on. Uh, we have the third covenant God has made with Abraham. If you read Genesis chapter 12, you can find the story. God has called Abraham and he made a covenant, right? That he, Abraham, might be the source of blessings to all nations. Also, the symbol of that covenant was uh, circumcision, that every boy uh, after the birth on the eighth day, uh, the boy should be circumcised. What's the meaning? What's the new uh, feature of this covenant? Well, the new one, the added uh, part, is that God wanted to redeem all people. Not only the physical descendants of Noah and Abraham, but all people on earth. So all nations can be God's people, right? So it is wrong when the Jewish people argue that we alone are the chosen people of God. Because God clearly said, when you obey my commandments, when you respond to my word in a right way, then I will bless you and all the nations will be blessed through you. Right? So it means that this covenant teaches us that his redemption is universal. It's not just for one ethnic group, the Jewish people, right? Well, Jewish people are very special in the sense that they were chosen by God, but it's not. It's wrong to say that only Jewish people will be saved. No. God wants to save all people, including you and me, right? That's the further step in God's covenant with Abraham, okay? Now, the fourth covenant with Moses is found in Exodus chapter 20 when God explained the Ten Commandments, as you know, right? When Moses came out of Egypt with the Israelites, they were in the wilderness, right? And for 40 days, Moses went up to the Mount Sinai to receive God's word. And God has written down Ten Commandments so that the Israelites can keep them, obey them as God's people. Then you might ask, why has God given those commandments? Well, the background of these Ten Commandments can be found in chapter 19 of the book of Exodus. God explains why he gives these commandments. Well, God explains like this. I have already chosen you, right? And you just came out of Egypt. Now you are entering to the land of Canaan, the promised land. But you have to keep these covenants so that you can be holy people of God, right? These covenants are not the condition of their redemption because they are already redeemed. They already came out of Egypt. So their entering to the promised land is guaranteed, but God has given them these Ten Commandments so that they can train themselves, they can exercise themselves, they can discipline themselves so that they can learn the way of the Lord. God is holy, so we have to be holy. So we should be different from other people who are worshipping the idols, you know, who are very immoral, you know, who have different worldviews. 
So God has given these Ten Commandments so that they might be God's chosen people and holy people and royal priests. And that is quoted by Apostle Peter in the New Testament. So when he explains the church, they are the chosen people of God and they are the royal priesthood. Then if you are priest, you need what? Sacrifice. Yeah? In the Old Testament, the priests sacrificed animals like a sheep or a lamb or ox and so on. But what is the sacrifice of the Israelites in an ultimate sense, in a New Testament context? It is actually other people, other Gentile people who do not know God yet. Then how can they know God? Through the holy life, the pure life, yeah? the Christian life, yeah? the believer's lifestyle, the Gentile might know, wow, they are different from us. They are very nice people, very good people, very holy people. So we want to be like them. We want to believe their God. Then all the Gentiles can be the sacrifice yeah, of the Israelites, of the people of God, to offer to God. That's the intention here in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. Well, this picture is inside the ark in the Holy of Holies, the most holy place in the tabernacle. And that's also the symbol of God's covenant because you can find here the two tablets of Ten Commandments. And Israelites were asked to keep the Sabbath holy yeah, as the resting day. But all together, these Ten Commandments have this meaning, right? And the Ten Commandments are still valid for us. Not as the law of God, not for us to observe, to be saved, no. Because we are already saved, because we are already redeemed through Jesus Christ, and we need to live a holy life. And the standard, the criteria of the holy lifestyle is to keep the Ten Commandments, right? The last point. In the Old Testament, you can find the fifth co co covenant with David. Well, the prophet uh, Nathan came to David and gave the promise of God that his kingdom will be forever, right? So the symbol of his king covenant is the, the crown here. And what does that mean actually? Well, it means God's kingdom will be forever. The kingdom of David was actually destroyed by the Babylonians because his son Solomon and uh, all the descendants were gone. They were captured, you know, and they were taken to Babylon. So the physical kingdom is collapsed. But the spiritual kingdom of God, which is yeah, accomplished through Jesus Christ, who is the son of David, yeah, the descendant of Abraham. So the invisible kingdom of God will be forever, right? So when you collect, when you gather all those five elements of the covenant, you can find the step-by-step -step gradual development of God's redemption. Also, it's a restorating aspect. Also, it's comprehensive aspect. That's why I have given you the three aspects of God's redemption. 
so far today and next week we'll move on how Jesus Christ accomplished all these covenants. Thank you and see you next time.